so you see the fourth question in the leaderboard we have a 50 year old woman who has received a recent diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis and presents to her general practitioner with ongoing pain and stiffness in her hands and as well as feet so there is pain and stiffness in her hands and feet which joints are usually spared at the onset of rheumatoid arthritis proximal interphalangeal joints distal interphalangeal joints metacarpophalangeal joints wrist and metatarsophalangeal joints okay so definitely in patients with rheumatoid arthritis so diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis confirmed case of rheumatoid arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis is a polyarthritis and it involves the small joints and which particular small joints are involved proximal interphalangeal joints are involved metacarpophalangeal joints are involved and metatarsophalangeal joints are involved and followed by that wrist joints are also involved but the point is the distal interphalangeal joints they are not involved in rheumatoid arthritis and they are spared at the onset of the rheumatoid arthritis okay so if you take the hand changes associated with rheumatoid arthritis they are frequently tested in clinical and as well as the examination because the most common presenting features are pain and stiffness of the small joints of hands and feet and that particular pain and stiffness of the small joints of the hands and feet they are worse in the morning the most common joints at the onset of the disease affected are proximal interphalangeal joints metatarsophalangeal joints wrist joint and metatarsophalangeal joint whereas the distal interphalangeal joints are usually spared at the onset making this the answer to this particular question because the question asked is which is usually spared and it is important to note however that this is a variable disease and some patients may present with other joint involvement also that means apart from these small joints the other joints which are affected in rheumatoid arthritis is there will be involvement of the elbow joints involvement of shoulder involvement of the knee joints involvement of the ankles right so these are also the joints which are affected the large joints but that is always after the involvement of the small joints and as the disease progress and joint damage occurs in the hand a variety of deformities may be seen within the hand now what are these particular deformities and these deformities include number one ulnar deviation palmar subluxation right palmar subluxation of metacarpophalangeal joint mcp right metacarpophalangeal joints and they can also have the classical deformities that is botanids deformity this botanids deformity right botanids deformity this botanids deformity they will have flexion deformity at the proximal interphalangeal joints and there will be hyperextension at the distal interphalangeal joints that will be the botanist deformity and the other deformity what this individual can develop is swanneck deformity so if you take the swanneck deformity in the proximal interphalangeal joints they will have hyperextension and in the distal interphalangeal joints they'll have flexion so remember this the botanist deformity and as well as the swanneck deformity the hyperextension and flexion is exactly opposite right so the deformities are ulnar deviation palmar subluxation botanist deformity swanneck deformity and there can be also dorsal subluxation of ulnar styloid 
all right so this is about your the deformity is what you will see in patients with the rheumatoid arthritis and like in these patients with the rheumatoid arthritis there will be also inflammation of the flexor tendon sheath which is present over the forearm and because of the inflammation of the flexor tendon sheath which is present over the forearm they may result in the carpal tunnel syndrome and there can be inflammation of extensor tendon sheath that can cause the tendon rupture therefore it is worth looking out for scars of carpal tunnel decompression and tendon repair during the clinical examination so in this patient the distal interphalangeal joints are spared at the onset of your rheumatoid arthritis so that completes the discussion of the question number 4